What is up, investors, and welcome back to the Everything Crypto Show, where we bring you the latest and most important news moving the crypto markets, DeFi tutorials on how you can optimize your crypto holdings to earn some juicy yield, as well as deep dives on projects we see as having huge potential for the future. Now, as always, please remember that nothing on this channel is financial advice, rather my own thoughts, opinions, and research that I have compiled and broken down for viewer education and entertainment purposes only. Please invest responsibly, and I love and appreciate appreciate you all and with that said we are going to get right into today's crypto market update and we got a lot to cover today including some new u.s regulation some new sec probes into centralized exchanges as well as upgrades to some of our favorite projects like ethereum xrp avalanche etc so you definitely do not want to miss this one now for starters i do just want to address the video that we did make yesterday regarding the chronos steakhouse which i believe to be a massive ponzi scheme if you have not checked that video out definitely go ahead and take a look now i do just want to actually clarify my stance here i still believe that chrono steakhouse is a ponzi scheme i have not changed my stance on this project what i do want to address specifically is a portion of the video that involved some tweets some images and there were some influencer names involved now this channel is a fact-based research-based channel i am not here for the hearsay and i am definitely not here to throw people under the bus i want the crypto community to be a positive one so, as I said in yesterday's video, if you are involved in the Chrono Steakhouse, if you are sharing a referral code to get other people involved, as I said, it's none of my business. Who am I to tell people what to do with their money? All I'm here to do is inform the community on what this pool is and ensure that if you are somebody sharing this referral code, that you are at least properly informing people of what they are getting involved in. And that is all I'm really concerned with here is transparency. But on that note, once again, I am always going to keep it transparent with you guys. And I am letting you know that the way this is structured, it is most certainly a Ponzi scheme. So do your own research, definitely mitigate your own risk. And that is all I'm going to say about this. So now we're going to move right into the weekly market update. Once again, we got a lot to get through today. We can see right now that the fear and greed index is sitting at a 15. This is one of the longest periods since the fear and greed index has been released that we have really been range bound here between like this 10 to 15 range obviously given the macro conditions people are scared right now and this does not appear to be improving anytime soon we also saw Bitcoin put in one green candle here after nine weekly red candles in a row. We did pump up the 31,000 to finally break this record streak here of red candles. However, then we did subsequently just tank the very next day. So it literally appears like Bitcoin did go ahead and pump just to break this streak of red candles. And now we are on our way right back down. We have also talked about the Bitcoin dominance on this channel before. And that is that in bear markets, Bitcoin dominance does tend to to go up it does tend to trend upwards with time and this is effectively a big big function of the bear market that weans out these altcoins these projects that had no business being so high up there and people tend to flock to safety and that is bitcoin in the crypto markets so in the coming months i would expect bitcoin dominance to actually go ahead and even reach the 60 percent level and this does not mean that bitcoin has to go up this just means that bitcoin is going to outperform ETH and the rest of the alts, meaning that if Bitcoin is down 5%, these alts will probably be down 7 to 8%. And once again, this is coming from the perspective of someone, I am not a Bitcoin maxi by any means. In fact, I still do believe that eventually Ethereum will flip Bitcoin to become the largest cryptocurrency in the world. But I do believe that, you know, we, there's no really no sense in fighting trends either. I've seen this happen before, and this is the function of bear markets. We can see here that Ethereum, after being on a nice uptrend versus is Bitcoin for the past year. It has finally broken down big time and I do expect it to continue downwards. So the ETH to Bitcoin valuation looks like it's going to keep bleeding. Bitcoin dominance looks like it is going to keep going up and all the indicators are pointing to the fact that we are in a bear market and we are effectively in Bitcoin season. So we are still taking the opportunity to cautiously dollar cost average into our altcoins. However, acknowledging that they could go much lower. There is no sense in fighting the trend here and the trend is very 
clear in my opinion. And a really important thing to recognize is that regardless of what is going on with these alts, regardless of the good news, nobody cares when inflation is coming in at 8.3%, okay? And I do believe that this month, that for May, that we will actually see another increase as the decrease in April down to 8.3% inflation was off the backs of gas prices cooling off. But gas prices have been absolutely ripping throughout all of May and into June. So I do expect the May numbers to come in very ugly looking, which would probably cause another downturn in the markets. And also we can see that Jamie Dimon here, who is essentially the CEO of JP Morgan, one of the biggest US investment banks in the world. He says, brace yourself for an economic hurricane. And this is caused by two main factors. The so-called quantitative tightening is scheduled to begin this month. And this is basically going to ramp up to 95 billion a month in the Fed, reducing their bond holdings on their balance sheet. And the other large factor worrying Diamond here is the Ukraine war and its impact on commodities, including food and oil. And he predicts that oil and uh, oil could go as high as 150 to 175 per barrel. Now, in some other news here, we see that the New York Senate passed a bill targeting Bitcoin's proof of work mining to address some of the environmental issues surrounding crypto and the proof of work mechanism, which is essentially the consensus used by Bitcoin and some other cryptos to validate transactions. This bill would put a two year ban on any carbon based fuel powered proof of work mining ventures in New York. However, existing mining companies or those in the process of renewing their permits would be permitted to continue operating. And this measure passes in with a 36 to 27 majority because of the low cost of hydroelectric electricity new york has long been viewed as a desirable location for bitcoin and crypto mining companies to set up shop but if the ban is enacted mining businesses have already vowed to leave citing their relative ease of doing business in more mining friendly states like texas and we got some other big news out of the u.s including a crypto bill that will be introduced today which could be horrendous for all coins it is u.s senator cynthia Loomis has been working on an action plan for months, a longtime proponent of cryptocurrencies. She is basically trying to introduce a proposal that will fully integrate digital assets into the U.S. financial system. This can either be something that is taken very positively by the market or incredibly negative. And honestly, I do tend to think that this is going to go to the latter way, that this will be seen as more of a negative thing. And this bill has some very controversial topics, including which coins are commodities, which are securities, stable coins, the CBDC framework, and the NFT direction. People are essentially scared that this legislation will most likely be ideal and in favor of Bitcoin, but it may actually harm some altcoins if they are identified as commodities or securities. Reason being that plenty of people on this thing here actually are uh, like Bitcoin maxis like Cynthia Loomis, Ted Cruz, Michael Saylor. They are like outspoken Bitcoin maxis. So I would not be surprised at all to see if this bill actually does favor Bitcoin and potentially harm some of these altcoins. And it does say here that there are not many pro DeFi, pro Ethereum or pro crypto for folks working on this bill. Bitcoin holders are in great difficulty this week. And the first thing they point out is that commodities versus securities are being resolved by legislation and ethereum layer one will fall within the securities umbrella so the lesson from all this is that the folks who worked on the legislation are very bitcoin oriented and bitcoin centric with a small number of eth maximalists and that is what does have people scared about ethereum nfts and their altcoins we're gonna have to see what comes out of this bill now we also see u.s regulators are investigating binance's bnb token and effectively, the SEC is looking into whether or not Binance should have registered Binance Coin before their ICO in 2017, accusing them of the same thing they did accuse Ripple of, that they basically sold an unregistered security to raise funds for their platform. And we did warn about this. We have been talking about this with XRP as well, that if you think this SEC lawsuit versus XRP is only about them, you are wrong. They are going to start coming after some of your other favorite coins. And here's an example of that. Now, Binance Binance is also currently under investigation by the Justice Department, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, and the Internal Revenue Service. While they are currently the world's biggest crypto exchange, you know that we fully expect Crypto.com to come in here and take this number one spot from Binance in the future. They are currently not under any heat by the SEC as they do not operate the same way that Binance does. Binance has, has been involved in some shady business practices for quite a while here, hence why they do have all of these investigations opening 
underneath them. And hey, what is bad for one platform is good for another. So in my opinion, this is definitely a good look for Crow if they can keep out of the SEC spotlight and let Binance take more of this heat. Now, we have not discussed ETH 2.0 for a while on this channel, but I do think it's time to mention it again because we are going through the Ropeston test net. This is actually happening tomorrow, and after this ETH proof of stake merge test net, there are going to be two more before the main net merge, meaning we are only three tests away from ETH 2.0 launching from ETH transitioning from proof of work to proof of stake. And I don't really believe this has been priced into Ethereum at under 2000 per coin. But as we did mention previously in bear markets, nobody cares about the good news. So while we could see more pain in the coming months, just given the overall macro condition, we are still DCAing into ETH on a monthly basis and we waiting to see if we actually drop into the mid to low 1000s to buy a more substantial amount but i do believe that e 2.0 will come at the end of this year or early next year i still do believe in the flipping occurring that eth will overtake bitcoin as the number one crypto and clearly other people are also very confident in e 2.0 here as we can see that the staking rate has grown to 10.72 percent so effectively you can see here that 13.27 million ethereum in total are locked up in this pool which is once again equivalent to more than 10.7 percent of east total market currently being staked this does show a lot of confidence in ETH 2.0 and I do believe that it will once again just solidify the fact that Ethereum is the DeFi king. It has always been, and in my opinion, it will always remain the DeFi king, especially if the team behind Ethereum is going to continue to upgrade the network like this to make it more scalable, to make it more efficient, and more cost-effective for users. Now, I just want to bring you guys a quick word from a new project called Club Crow. The team here has, has doxxed themselves to me as I have met with them. They are also in the process of an audit with a rug pull finder. And essentially what Club Crow is, is you are paying for a membership. This cost is $400, the same as the RubySteelCrypto.com Visa. And the promotional giveaway here is an instant 10x on your membership cost in Crow. Now, for full transparency, they are the sponsor of today's video. And the plan they have here is to take a founder's fee of 10% and set aside a cash flow and a rainy day fund and the balance will go into the club crow crypto.org validator node and the rewards from this validator node will be distributed to five members a week so each week five members will get the staking reward of the whole pool there will be a first to fifth place prizes on a weekly basis first place every week will 3x their membership cost second place will 2x third place will 1.5x fourth place will 1x and fifth place will 0.75x and if you win a prize you can still win again so your membership does not end there now what does make club crow different is that you actually have a buyback guarantee if you have not won a prize after two years of weekly draws they have a buyback mechanic and they will buy back your membership nft for the original amount of Crow which you used to purchase the membership, meaning that if Crow doubles in two years from where it is now, even if you don't win, you will have doubled your initial investment by holding your Crow in the membership. This buyback guarantee does happen every two years, and if the project does have a successful launch and there is enough Crow to actually create a crypto.org chain staking pool, you will be able to see the validator node on the network anytime you choose. This is a mix of DeFi and using NFTs as a membership tool with utility. I'm going to go ahead and link their website and Discord in the the description down below for you guys to check out once again always do your own research and thank you club crow for sponsoring this video moving on we got some more big news out of two of our favorite alt projects on the channel first of all the xrp the xrpl hit a historic milestone at its 72 millionth ledger the xrp ledger is a decentralized public blockchain which use cases span micropayments nfts DeFi, cbdc's and others there are currently over 150 validators active on the ledger which uses a a consensus protocol ensuring the blockchain becomes more decentralized over time as the validator pool grows and this comes not even a week after the 10th anniversary of ripple and of xrp so definitely a big milestone there and now we have a big partnership and collaboration between the xrp ledger and avalanche so the apex bridge will allow xrp tokens to be transferred from the xrp ledger to avalanche and other evm networks once the bridge is deployed apex will be opening up wrapped 
dropped XRP on Apex Swap, a first in the Avalanche ecosystem. Now, this comes as multi chain announced support for the XRP ledger in March, allowing a cross chain connection with EVM and non EVM compatible chains, meaning that hundreds of thousands of DeFi users will be easily able to transfer assets between the XRP ledger and other blockchains. Through this, multi chain will facilitate the cross chain transfer of XRP, XRP ledger's native digital asset with Ripple's technical aid, thanks to its integration with the XRPL. And more importantly, this means that assets like ETH, Matic, AVAX, Phantom, USDT, and USDC will flow directly to the XRP ledger. So what we're seeing here is a big key thing we talk about on the channel, and that is interoperability. We are now looking at the XRP ledger becoming interoperable with other blockchains, which will definitely drive more TVL onto the XRP ledger. And speaking of Ledger, now we're going to move on to Ledger Nano, which is obviously the cold storage wallet. They have finally integrated HBAR into the Ledger Live desktop app, meaning you can now actually create an HBAR account on your Ledger. You can send and receive HBAR to your Ledger, and you can actually buy it with MoonPay through the app. Mobile support is coming soon, so we are just seeing more and more adoption for Hedera, and I do think that as time goes on, that this team will continue to innovate that more and more projects will want to integrate with Hedera as they see the efficiency of this project. So definitely just another really big sign towards the adoption of Hedera. And we also saw a couple of weeks ago that MetaMask was actually finding a way to... Um, include and incorporate Hedera onto their MetaMask wallet. So definitely some big moves being me being made here by Hedera, but also by wallets to actually integrate the Hedera network into their services. And to me, this does indicate that these wallets do see a ton of capital flowing into Hedera. And that is why they do actually want to be involved in offering accounts that can hold this token. So once again, we had a lot to get through today. I hope you guys did enjoy this weekly market update. We have not done one actually in a couple of weeks, which I guess makes it more like the monthly market update but we did go through a lot of news today and once again the one thing i will be keeping a very close eye on is this highly anticipated bill passing by senator cynthia loomis we are going to be covering that as soon as it does come out which will probably be at some point later today or tomorrow so stay tuned for that once again i'm wishing you guys all the best i hope you all remain happy safe and healthy peace out for now